Good morning. How are you? It's so good to see you. We'll sing and be happy because we're all here together again. Welcome back to my backyard, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. It is going to be a great, great day. Let's go ahead and get started with our calendar. What month is it? We are still in the month of May. We are just trucking right along. We're going to count all the way down to this number right here. We're going to start with one. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Take a look at that twenty. What does it look like? Right here. It's a two and a zero. You're right, a two and a zero. What does this two represent? What does the two represent? Two groups of ten. It's two groups of ten. And what does that zero represent? Zero extra ones. Very good. Let's take a look at our days. Yesterday was Tuesday. What does Tuesday start with? T and T says... Yesterday was Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. Very good. Wednesday starts with what letter? W and W says w -w -w. Yesterday was Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. Now remember Thursday has two letters in the beginning. Two letters are good. T and H and T and H together says Stick that tongue out. Okay, so how many days are in your week? Seven. Let's sing them. Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week seven days in your week. How many months in your year? Twelve. Let's sing those. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Very good. All right, boys and girls, if you see a little bit of smoke coming across um, my camera. Can you see this? Um, so it's mosquito season and Miss Ball's backyard attracts a lot of mosquitoes. So I have this little coil and it's supposed to help me not get bit. So y'all hope and wish that I don't get bit, I guess stung during this lesson, okay? Um, so hopefully that coil works. That will be super great if it does. All right, let's go ahead and just dive into our day. It's time to take a look in our teacher book. Before we do that, let's go ahead and review our concept and our essential question. Our weekly concept is problem solvers. And our essential question says, what can happen when we work together? Now, with the story we read yesterday was called, What's the Big Idea, Molly? And they worked together to make a present for Turtle. So they all ended up drawing the same picture, but they worked together to figure it out. And Molly came up with the idea to do the trees in different season. So they were all able to work together to give Turtle one very nice present. All right, so today we have a couple new vocabulary words. All right, so let me pull those out. We've got three today, three, three vocabulary words. All right, here we go. All right, the first word is the word ragged. Say ragged, ragged. Something that is ragged is torn or worn out. 
my mother thinks my sneakers look too worn out and ragged. How can you tell these shoes are ragged? All right, so your turn and talk question. Again, if there's somebody in the room with you, mom, dad, grandma, babysitter, older sibling, or even younger sibling, um, here's your turn and talk question. How do you think a shoemaker could fix a pair of ragged shoes? How would a shoemaker fix a pair of ragged shoes? Turn and talk. Um, so a shoemaker uh, is someone who typically fixes shoes. Um, I guess a long, long time ago they would be the person who made the shoes, shoemaker. Um, so how would they fix a ragged pair of shoes? Well, your shoes are made up of different materials. Um, a, a lot of shoes are made from leather. Um, so I would think that if you had a ragged pair of shoes, a shoemaker could replace maybe the bottom part of your shoe, which is usually made of a leather or a leather type of material. Um, so I think they could maybe take it off and replace it. Um, or, you know, I've got some ragged looking shoes as well. Um, and sometimes I just wash them and it, it makes them look a little better. Now those are my work shoes that I work in the yard, but um, you know, I think it makes them look a little bit better just by a little cleaning, right? All right, your next word is the word marvel. Say marvel. Marvel. When you marvel at something, you admire it with surprise and amazement. Look at the picture that shows the word marvel. The boy is marveling at or looking with wonder at the painting in the museum. He thinks the painting is really great. I always marvel at the paintings at the museum. All right, so your turn and talk for today. It says, what do you marvel at here at school and why? What is something that you admire with surprise and amazement at school and why? Turn and talk. All right, so as your teacher, most of your teacher, I know we've got some extra kiddos tuning in today. Um, I know a lot of you, um, but within my own classroom, I marvel at my students. I look at my students with such amazement um, and surprise, especially whenever we go over new content, new material, and you guys just pick up on it. I, I look at you sometimes in wonder um, and marvel at how, how amazing I think you are. So that's something that I marvel at school. And why? Because you guys just shock me with how smart you are. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't teach them very well today. But then the next day you come in and you surprise me. And I'm like, well, maybe they did pick up on something. So I marvel at you guys just about every day with how smart you are. All right, and your last word for this week is the word grateful. Say grateful. Grateful, very good, grateful. A person is grateful or thankful for something that was done or for something that made the person happy. The woman in the picture is happy. She is grateful to her friends for giving her a cake for her birthday. I am grateful to have kind friends. All right, so your turn and talk, your last turn and talk for this week is, can you tell about a time you were grateful to someone? When was there a time that you were grateful or thankful for someone or something that they did to make you happy? Turn and talk.
All right, something I am grateful for. I am grateful for my family. My family is so supportive of me. Um, anytime I have a crazy idea uh, and I want to do something crazy and fun, my boys are always like, yeah, mom, let's do it. Um, Mr. Lance isn't always as eager, but he'll still do it because he knows that whatever it is, it's it's something that I love and, and want to do. So I'm, I'm grateful for my family. I'm thankful for my family, especially my boys, um, because they made me a mommy. And mommies love their kiddos, right? All right. Good job on that vocabulary review. We are going to read a new story today. Now, the name of this story is called The Elves. Let me make sure I say it right. Yeah, The Elves and the Shoemakers. Um, and it's based on a tale by the Grimm Brothers. Uh, so the genre is a tale. And remember, a tale is kind of like a fable. Um, in, in that it teaches us a lesson, okay? So as we're reading, uh, it's going to teach us a lesson, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and get started on this story. Uh, we're going to think about this question while we're reading. It says, what can happen when the elves work together? All right, here we go. Make sure you guys can see it. Once upon a time, there lived two shoemakers, a man and his wife. They worked in a small shoe shop where they made and repaired shoes. Like others in their neighborhood, the shoemakers were honest and hardworking, but poor. One fall day, the shoemakers had only a few bits and pieces of shoe leather left and no money to buy other supplies. I still have hammers and nails, but there is hardly enough leather to make another pair of shoes, said the shoemaker sadly. And there is no food left for dinner, added his wife. That evening, the shoemakers left the scraps of leather on the work table and went to bed hungry. They would decide what to do tomorrow. The next morning, the shoemakers went into their shop. Goodness gracious, they both exclaimed. They could not believe their eyes. For there, next to the needles and thread, sat a perfect pair of shoes made from the scraps of leather. What beautiful shoes! Such excellent work, said the shoemaker. Who could have done this job for us? His wife took the shoes outside the shop to marvel at them in the daylight. Just then, one of the king's men walked by. What beautiful shoes! Such excellent work, said the king's man. I must buy them. And he gave the shoemakers a gold coin. With the money, the happy shoemakers were able to invite their hungry neighbors to a celebration. Off they went to the market to buy food. And with the money they had left, they bought enough leather for two pairs of shoes. That night, the neighbors came over for a simple but delicious meal. Later, the shoemakers cut out more leather with large scissors. They left it on the workbench to work on the next day. Then they went to bed. While the shoemakers slept, two tiny elves scurried in. They busily snipped and stitched with strong needles and thick thread. Then they shined their two perfect pairs of shoes with a rag. They left the shoes on the workbench, and in a flash, they were gone. The next morning, the shoemakers went to their work table. Goodness, they cried. There on the workbench sat two beautiful pairs of shoes. The shoemakers put the shoes in the shop window. Just then, two of the queen's ladies-in-waiting walked by. What beautiful shoes! In our opinion, this is the most excellent work we have ever seen. Such precise stitching, they said. The queen's ladies gave the shoemakers three gold coins. The grateful shoemakers took the money and bought even more leather. Who is making such beautiful shoes for us? The shoemaker wondered as he cut up the leather. We must find out who is helping us. Tonight, let's stay up and watch, said his wife. That night, they did not go to sleep. They hid behind the door of their workshop and waited quietly. 
the shoemakers stayed awake watching the shop. At the stroke of midnight, two elves in old worn clothing suddenly appeared. The elves hurried to the workbench, grabbed the pieces of shoe leather, and in no time at all made four beautiful pairs of shoes. The shoemakers were amazed. Did you notice the holes in their ragged clothing? said the wife. They have done so much for us. Perhaps we can do something for them. The next day, while the husband sold the four new pairs of shoes, his wife made new clothes for the elves. That night, instead of more leather, the shoemakers left the clothes and a note on the work table. The note said, Dear elves, thank you for helping us. They signed it, the shoemakers. At the stroke of midnight, the two raggedy elves appeared. They read the note and joyfully put on their new clothes. They danced and sang and laughed with glee, and then they skipped out the door. The elves never came back, but the grateful shoemakers had enough money to continue making shoes and to live a happy life. The end. Those were some very helpful elves, weren't they? They were very helpful to the shoemakers. All right. So the elves are tiny make-believe characters, right? Like we could have also called this a fantasy, not just um, not just a tale, because elves are the elves in this story are tiny make-believe characters um, who appear when no one is watching. Um, so in this story, we could say that it could have also been a fantasy, right? Now we do know that there are some other elves that exist. Um, but we're not going to go any further into that. But the, the characters in this story were made up. Um, and so we could have called it a fantasy fiction along with calling it a tale. All right. All right. What letter are we working on this week? Letter what? U. But not short U because short U says, uh, like we're thinking. Not short U. Long U. What does long U say? you or ooh, right? Kind of like ooh. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to read some words. I'm just going to blend them and you're going to tell me what the word is. Okay, so we're just going to break down the sounds and you're going to tell me what the word is. Are you ready? Here we go. Mule. Mule. What's the word? Mule. Good. Next one, tune, tune. What's the word? Tune. All right, we're gonna do one more like that. I'm gonna do the rest of them with my hands because some of you, I think that works better for you. All right, the next one, use, use. What's the word? Fuse. Remember we said that the, the word fuse, you usually see that word when you're talking about electrical things. Um, you, you hear the word fuse when it comes to, to electricity a lot of times. All right, ready for the next one? Here we go. Yum. Yum. What's the word? Fume. A fume is like a, a smell, something, a smell. Uh, when something gives off a fume, it's giving off a, a smell. All right, you ready? K -ube. K -ube. What's the word? Cube. We know what a cube is because we already did our 3D shapes. It's a, it's a 3D shape, right? All right, two more. Here we go. Mute. Mute. What's the word? Mute. That's when you turn off that sound. And then when you unmute it, you can hear it again, right? All right, last word. Here we go. K ute. K ute. What's the word? Cute. What does cute mean? Hmm. 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 You. You mean cute. All right, here we go. Boogieing right along. Let's go over our sight words for this week. First word, good, good. I hope you are still 
being good for your mom and dad. Good. All right. And the next word, the word who, who, I'm going to ask you a question because that's a question word. Who loves you, baby? Miss Ball does. I love you. All righty. Very, very excellent work. All right, we have one more thing we're going to do today. This was something that Miss Ball didn't get to yesterday, um, but we've got a little bit of time today to do it. Is the story um, in our little big book. Usually it's big, but here it's little. Um, we didn't get a chance to read this book or this story yesterday. Um, but remember our stories in the little big book always have to do with our new sight words and our new letter sound. So we need to go ahead and read it. I know. Um, but let's go ahead. We'll do it and then we'll be done. Okay. It'll be a great Wednesday. All right. So let's take a look. Let me just fold this back. Let's look at the title. Let's take a look at the title. All right. So there's that new sight word. What's the sight word? Good. Here's a word with a long I, and here's a word with a long U. Those of you in Miss Gla I'm sorry, Miss Cutchins class, in Miss Cutchins class, you guys should know what that word says. Take a minute, sound it out. Ready? A good time, time for Luke. Luke. A good time for Luke. Remember? It's been a long time. Remember Luke? Miss Cutchins class? Luke from Miss Cutchins class, are you watching? All right. A good time for Luke. Let's see what good time Luke is going to have. All right. So let's take a look at that next page. I'm going to fold it back so it's a little easier to see. All right. So here's the name Luke. Again, you've got a long I word. You've got a Q-U-C-K combo word. That's a tricky first grade word right there. It's a long I word, but it's also a sight word. Um, sight word, and then that name Luke again. So, give you guys just a couple of seconds to read it. I'm going to go ahead and open so you can see both pages. All right, take a few seconds. Read it to yourself, and then we will read it together. Right, you ready? All right, here we go. Luke is five. Five. Luke is five. He can run. Here we go. Qu ick quick. We like to play with Luke. Luke is five. He can run quick. We like to play with Luke. Luke, are you still five? Have you had your birthday yet? Are you six yet? I don't know your birthday. You're not in my class. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's take a quick look ahead, see what we're working with here. Oh, we've got that Q-U-C-K combo again. Look at that. Here's a long A word with that helper E. We've got that name again. Name again. Oh, here's a long O word with that helper E. See, remember there's that, there's that sight word uh, that looks like it has that long A, but it's not. That's why it's a sight word. Here's our new sight word, and then here's a long I word. So a lot of like thinking words in here. All right, go ahead. I'll give you a few seconds. All right, you ready? Here we go. At set up a d eight date for Luke. J ot jot Luke a qu ick quick note note. We can have a good time time. Set up a date for Luke. Jot Luke a quick note. We can have a good time. What does it look like they're jotting down a, a date for? Maybe a birthday, right? 
All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so let's take a look here. A couple sight words. Here's a long A word. This one's easy. Y'all don't need any time. It's just that one long A word. Look at the long A word. Ready? Here we go. We are here for Luke. D eb Deb can s at set it up, up, up. T M Tim has a b it bit of t a p tape to fix a r ip rip. We are here for Luke. Deb can set it up, up, up. Tim has a bit of tape to fix a rip. Looks like they made him a happy birthday Luke banner back there. All right, here we go. Right along for Luke's birthday. Got a long I word here, a long A word, a long A word, long A word, long U. Here's a tricky long U. They've got a long U in the beginning, those tricksters, and then another long U. What a tricky word. All right, I'm going to give you guys a few seconds for this one because there's a lot of words to sound out. You ready? Mike. Mike can make make a big big cake cake. He can make same word make it in a t in tin pan pan June June can use use a red tube tube. Mike can make a big cake. He can make it in a tin pan. June can use a red tube. Making him a cake. All right, there we go. There's that name again, long U, long A, there's Luke, long A, long O, Luke. All right, just a couple sound out words here. Here we go, let's go. Look, June, June can tape, tape it up on top. Luke. Luke can take take it home home. Luke is a un kid kid in luck luck. Look, June can tape it up on top. Luke can take it home. Luke is a fun kid in luck. He's lucky to have such good friends, right? All right, here we go. Here's our other sight word for this week, who. Okay, here's another recent sight word, where. It's two question words, who with a question mark, where with a question mark. We've got a long I here. That long I, but we already know that word. That's the word like. All right, you ready? Here we go. Who can get get Luke? Where can we hide hide? Luke will like it a lot lot. Who can get Luke? Where can we hide? Luke will like it a lot. All right, last page. See, we've got all these long vowel names, long I, long U, and long A. And then that's it. All right, look at those names real quick. 
Get those names in your head. Here we go. Luke can see d eb deb t m tim Ike Mike j un June and k eight Kate. Luke can have fun. We have fun with Luke. Look at that. His friends threw him a surprise party. Wasn't that nice? That was nice. Alrighty. Alright, so let's take a look at what work you're going to do today. You are going to pull out this page from your work packet. Um, and we're going to think back to the story. What's the big idea, Molly? What's the big idea? All right, we're going to answer a few questions. You're going to circle the character who thinks best when swimming. Who thinks best when swimming? Was it the duck or was it Molly? All right. Which picture shows where Frog gets his best ideas? Under a tree? or in the pond. And then number three, which picture shows what the animals made for turtle? A book with trees or a picture with animals? Okay. On the back, we're going to sound out some long U words. They've given you this month of June, June, helper E. Do not forget that helper E. This is a cube, not to be confused with the Q sound, Q, it's k u b q. I know it sounds like there should be a Q in there, but there's not. k u b helper E. And then down here at the bottom, that is a mule. 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 Don't forget that helper E. If you don't have that helper E, it is a completely different word. All right. And last, 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 one last thing, and then you get to go enjoy your Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It is our last Wednesday. So hopefully you still have these papers. Um, I like to do them on Wednesdays. These are your CVC word drawings and your CVC sentence drawings. Um, six words, two sentences. You have so many to choose from, I seriously doubt that you went through all of these in the time we've been apart. So hopefully you still have it. Go ahead, finish out strong. If you guys, um, if you do your words and you do your sentences, I want it to be the best pictures you've done all year. So once you do those, moms and dads, go ahead and snap a picture of our very last CVC drawings. I wanna see them, okay? So if mom and dad's not nearby and you get done with your very best work, run and say, mom, take a picture of this, send it to Miss Ball. Okay? All right. That's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. I still miss you so much. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I will see you uh, again tomorrow. All right? I love you. Bye.